is an introduction to ArcGIS Pro and we'll be using it all semester, so a few tips at the beginning can make things easier. So when you first open Windows, down here in this lower left corner is this Start icon. If you click on it, you'll get a list of available applications. And if you've used ArcGIS Pro recently, it'll show up near the top. If not, you go down to the ArcGIS folder and open it and left click on ArcGIS Pro. And it should give you this splash screen and then open the main entry window. Now, when ArcGIS Pro starts, you have a list of recent projects if you had any, and if not, you have a list of templates on the left. So we typically start with this blank template. And if you click on it, it gives you an opportunity to name the project and specify its location. As we noted earlier, you should probably do all your work on the local computer on the desktop into the lab folder that you created. So we're having you copy the data over onto the local desktop. Otherwise, things can get slow because of connection issues over the internet. Depends on where you're working. If you work on the machine locally here, that is out on the server, you don't have to worry about how fast the internet is for most of your processing. So I'm gonna put mine here in the lab where I have my data, in this case, the lab one, and I'll open that folder. And I'm going to name it whatever I want to name it. So this would be first project. Now you want the name to be something a recognizable. Proj1, Proj2, Proj3, or first project probably aren't um, good. You should really have a name that's descriptive. So when you look at it, you don't have to scratch your head and try and remember and maybe pick the last one. That done, I press OK, and it gives me a new project and it opens with this rather forbidding window with all sorts of options across the top and the bottom and three main columns. Don't worry about it too much. We'll go through these piece by piece. It seems kind of odd that the catalog here is repeated twice. We really don't need both of them so I can close one. Now one of the things that you want to do in your project is be able to save your project. So up here in the upper left corner, you can click on this project and that's where the save is. Now you want to save often because if it crashes or if you walk away and the virtual machine rolls up and goes to sleep, you may lose work. So you want to go make sure you know how to save a project, go back and forth between this project up here in the left corner and saving or save as to a new location. And then once that's done, you can go back here to the main menu where you do things. You notice there's a bunch of tabs across the top. So various menu items become available. And we'll go through these piece by piece in future labs. So the main ones we'll go back and forth are the map and the insert and the analysis. We'll also do editing and other things. So first things first, we want to insert a new map. So if I left click here on the tab, the insert tab to make it open and then left click on the new map, it'll open a new map here and push it into this middle pane. And you can see that I can resize these various panes or panels. There's typically a left one of the table of contents and some quick shortcuts, the maps usually in the middle, and then the catalog and other things I do are over here on the right. Now you'll notice that this catalog has now different tabs at the bottom, so I can get different views on this catalog by clicking on these tabs. For now, uh, we'll just go over the main pieces. Also notice that I get this default background in a map. It's a world topographic map and a world hillshade, and I can zoom in or out with these buttons up here, or I can use the scroll wheel, if you have a scroll wheel or the equivalent, back and forth to zoom in. And you can see information. Now, if I left click and hold, I can drag the map. So again, zoom in, zoom out. I can zoom to the previous extent or the <clears throat> extent going forward by these little uh, blue buttons here. So I can zoom back and forth. So you often are doing this, left clicking and holding and zooming in or out to reposition um, the view in your window. Now in this table of contents, I can click on or off the data layers that are displayed so I can show them or not show them. And I can also 
drag and hold to change the order. So if I left click and drag and hold, I change the order. Then I can also right click and show all sorts of properties. So if I right click and then scroll down and click on the map, it'll show a bunch of properties. The general properties like its name, um, metadata on it, a bunch of other information, the source. Now this is useful. It shows where it's pulling this from. This is pulled from a web source, so it's not local or may not be local. Um, and then uh, other information like the extent, the area that's covered, or the spatial reference. We'll talk about that, these particular things in future labs. I also noticed that I have along the top here various options under the map menu, and one of the commonest ones is adding data. So we'll often click on this and then navigate in this uh, table of contents on the left. In this case, it's showing the data that I copied over earlier, the Lab 1 data, and then I can click on these layers to add them to my table of contents and to my map. So if I just click on this Graticule and hit OK, it shows a Graticule. These are the lines of latitude and longitude across my data layer. So I can add data. If I want to get rid of data, I right click over the data and then I remove it and that layer will disappear. Uh, I can insert additional maps. So if I click on this and I have a map existing, it'll add a new map and you can see again, it's keeping up this tab notion. So sometimes if I have more than one shown, I have to be careful because I might be looking at the wrong one. So if uh, something appears and seems to cover stuff up, your stuff may have not been lost. You just may have uh, created a new layer with a new tab. And so some of these things that you do uh, add tabs. And so be aware down here at the bottom at the top of what these tabs do. Now there are other things too. So for example, as I move around the map, so here I'm gonna zoom into near Minneapolis. Oops, zoomed in too far. Um, I can show the coordinate location of where I'm at or view it here in this bottom window here in the middle. So if I go into near Minneapolis, I can see I'm at 93.29 degrees west and 45.07 degrees north. And so it gives you information on the location. It also gives you a little scale window here that shows the scale. And I can click on this and ask it to zoom to a specific scale. So here's one to a half million, or I can zoom into one to five million, so the scale gets smaller. And so I can, as well as zoom and pan, get information on where I am and stick to a specific scale. Uh, there were various other things we'll talk about in turn. So in later labs, we'll get into analysis, basically starting with a lab eight. So we'll show the ARC tools and toolbox and work on raster analysis. In lab four, we'll talk about editing. So we'll go over this edit tab and how to work with things. Um, and in various other labs, we'll do various other things, exporting and other stuff. So we'll go through many of these tabs. For now, we're also going to work in today's lab on this map and insert and on um, in the project.